how you've clicked onto today's tropical tidbit for Sunday, and here's Beryl now, barreling right towards the Florida coastline. She'll be coming in just south of Jacksonville this evening. She only has less now than 12 hours over water left. You can see that she's gotten convection going over the nighttime as we expected as she moved over the Gulf Stream here. Uh, despite her naked swirlness yesterday, she is now getting those thunderstorms going. You can see the center itself is still exposed here, but we have a, a curved band of intense convection that has been trying to wrap around since last night and getting ever deeper and stronger as we move on in time. Uh, the recon plane that went in there yesterday found a pressure of 999 millibars. This morning, uh, the plane found found 998 millibars, so it hasn't strengthened so much in terms of central pressure, but they did find the winds increased to 60, and there's a reason for that, despite the pressure not deepening, when you get these thunderstorms to go off, they tighten the circulation and the pressure gradient, and that's why the winds increase uh, compared to the naked swirl that we had yesterday. The thunderstorms will always increase the winds for you, uh, even if the central pressure does not change. So this will be coming ashore. As promised, you can see all the rain uh, that is uh, around the circulation at 360 degrees. Notice, though, something interesting about the northwest side. If you take a look at these low-level clouds that are rotating around, pay attention to this dry slot of clear, clear skies that is right here. This is due to cold shelf waters that are basically the cool environment is depleting the thunderstorms that are trying to come over this and they're all dissipating as they come over this portion of the water and uh, this is what Beryl is going to be moving over right here just before landfall so her opportunity for strengthening is actually not right up to the coast I think it's up until she hits this dry spot that you can see right here and uh, once she hits that it's probably over in terms of intensification but she's up to 60 and that was my forecasted peak intensity so this is doing pretty well following our forecast and hitting right right in the center of this area that we outlined for landfall here. So the forecast is turning out pretty well. The NHC is still calling this a subtropical storm. I will have to disagree because of the convection that has now developed. The system is fully independent of all the mess that was out here, uh, the trophy zone, the frontal zone, whatever they wanted to call it. And uh, this is now sustaining itself on purely tropical processes because remember yesterday we discussed about how we shut off the Bear Clinic support entirely. The fact that her pressure has not risen and she is still under a thousand millibars in pressure and the thunderstorms are growing means that she is now tropical because she's sustaining herself on nothing but the warm water beneath her and if you you can argue about the upper level low still being present over the circulation but if you look over here notice the cirrus clouds drifting southward in a counterclockwise or anticyclonic fashion out from the curved bands. This is no longer cold core aloft. This is warm core aloft. This should be a tropical storm before landfall. We will see if they officially classify it as such. If they don't, I expect it will get a second look during the post season. For now, though, it's the impacts that matter. This will be coming ashore and bringing some rain. Here's the radar. You can see the curved bands coming into it here and uh, rain all around the center. This will be coming in. <clears throat> Florida will get most of the rainfall in here. Georgia will get some rain. And then it's going to be uh, turning around and coming northeastward. You can see on the water vapor imagery here, it's a little small, but here's Beryl. Here's the ridge that blocked her to the north over here that's bringing her westward into the coast. And here's the, the long wave trough out to the west here. This is propagating east-northeastward. This will be eroding the ridge over the next couple of days. And so when Beryl comes into Florida, she's going to turn around and come east-northeast. And that's why you can see these models here bringing her inland and then scooting her out to the east-northeast, coming back over the water for a time off of the Carolinas. And uh, the models are hinting that she could re-strengthen over the water there. And uh, potentially even become stronger pressure-wise than she was when she came into the coast. I have some doubts about that, but she could become a tropical storm again as she heads out to sea, though she will be getting probably sheared from the southwest as she does so because she's being recurved by a trough, and so much of the rain will remain offshore as she scoots the coast and the outer banks of North Carolina, but they could still get some rain along this corridor near the coast, and the major relief will be coming in the southern parts of Georgia and northern and central Florida here as the circulation comes ashore, and that will aid with the drought problems that they have in that area of the world. So overall, this should be a beneficial storm as it comes in. Uh, probably not too big of a deal wind-wise. We're going to have gusts up near that 60 mile per hour mark, especially as she continues to develop convection and wrap it in tighter. She comes towards the coast, and uh, overall, 
beneficial because of the rain. So this is a good preseason storm, a fun one to watch, a historical one. This hasn't happened in over 100 years where we get two before June 1st. Uh, so this has been a fun one. After barrel, uh, like I've been saying for the last couple of videos, we're going to be entering a quiet period in the Atlantic. Probably no significant activity or threats for development for the next couple of weeks at least, and I think we will have to wait until after June 15th to find any more opportunities uh, for tropical development. So it's going to be a bit of a quiet period to start off the official part of the season, despite the active May, and I will talk more about that in future posts after Barrel is out of our hair. Alright, that's it for today. Thanks for watching.